So you guys do know that in the past, I've been very crazy about cutting the cost of chicken feet. I've found out some things with time, as I've gotten more exposure and as I've learned more things, that there is actually a more effective way of keeping chickens. This is without all the expenses of commercial feeds and hence it enables us to make more money. Currently, the cost of chicken feeds are crazy. They are increasing. It's becoming too much. And when it comes to pricing, the cost of proteins per kilogram is the most expensive of all constituents of chicken feed. You know, when it comes to chickens, we always feed them with proteins, with carbohydrates, which is the energy source. You'll have vitamins, you'll have calcium, for me who keeps chickens for eggs. But proteins are the most expensive. And at a particular point, I had made up my mind that I was going to explore all these different kinds and sources of proteins for chickens. Oh my God, guys, just look at this. Look at this, it worked. It really worked. Oh my god, we are on the right track. I'm so excited. It has worked! And I came across keeping maggots for chickens. You know, you raise flies, these are called black soldier flies, and they give you maggots, and you use these maggots to feed your chickens. So yes, a while back, I decided to start my black soldier fly farm. Went and picked up a few pupae and some larvae from a farm somewhere, brought them over to my farm, and decided that I'm going to be breeding these maggots. You know, I was getting some waste, using things like maize, bran, and other waste that I could come across to try and grow these maggots. Okay, guys, just look at this. Look at this. Oh my God. Oh my God, guys, just look at this. Okay, I know you already know what it is. But yeah, black soldier fly lobby. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so excited. Guys, I don't know why I didn't start doing farming earlier. This is so satisfying. This feels so good. Oh my God. But it became so tiresome. It became so tiresome. It reached a point where I just noticed I don't think I can succeed at doing black soldier fly farming because it was so tiresome. It just felt like this is meant to be a project of its own, you know? I just can't keep doing this while also trying to raise chickens because raising chickens alone already requires a lot of attention and a lot of work. I 100% gave up, told myself I'm not going to be feeding my chickens with black soldier fly larvae again. I even made a video about it. And then recently, I had what would be called a light bulb moment. Met these guys in the city in Kampala who actually do all the hard work. You know, everything that I thought was very hard for me, everything that I had to go through, and I found stressing that is the actual breeding of the black soldier flies because breeding is quite complicated. You know, you need particular temperatures, environment, in order to make sure that the black soldier flies met and that you have eggs that you're going to be using to reproduce. That was the hardest point of everything. And just like that, if the only thing that you need to do is raise the maggots up to the point of maturity, dry them and feed them to the chickens, then most of the work has been taken away. And the cost has also been brought down because you're using waste that you have available to you. For me here, I have chickens, diplita, or I can collect waste all around. I can use a lot of this waste to grow the maggots, and then I'll feed the maggots to my chickens. But hey, after thinking about it again, and thinking critically into the matter, I'm still not feeding my chickens maggots. 100% not. Here is why. So this is it. When you're raising chickens like me, the main types of chickens I do raise are breeders, commercial layers, and once in a while, commercial broilers. Now, these are chickens that are super sensitive to feed. And the most important thing when you're raising these kinds of chickens is the constituents of the feed. You need to make sure that you are getting exactly what you need, exactly what you want. If I need, let's say, 17% crude protein inside my chicken feed, for let's say the breeders, if I don't get 17% of crude protein inside the feed, then I'm going to have issues with everything else, you know, with the fertility of the, of, of the eggs, with the quality of chicks that's going to come out, with how long those chickens will be giving me, you know, good quality chicks. Same thing with, let's say, my commercial layers. If I don't have the target protein available, I'm going to be wasting the bodies of the chickens. And if I'm expecting them to give me eggs, let's say up to 80 weeks, they might only give them to me up to 70 weeks. Or also with the broilers, you know, if you're giving them, let's say, 16% crude protein instead of the 20% that you're supposed to be giving them, then that means you're not going to be getting the target weight that you expect. And now, when it comes to using black soldier fly larvae 
as chicken feed, because of the variability of the sources of waste that you're going to be giving to your larvae, the crude protein available in the maggots is going to vary so, so much. It's going to vary so much. It can be anything from, you know, 35 to 65%. If you're giving them, for example, pig waste, they're going to have a lot of crude protein. If you're giving them, for example, you know, cattle waste mixed with some bran, maybe you'll get 40%. And that variability is not something that chickens want. It's not something that chickens entertain. Actually, from my previous interaction with the expert, the guy who I met about these um, black soldier fly larvae, he also couldn't give me certainty on 100% what protein I could be very certain of providing my chicken. So simply because of that, guys, for me, for the farm, it just doesn't make sense. It's not something that I can do because I'm literally gambling with my business. It's a lot of money going in for the investments and it just doesn't make sense for me to gamble with this, you know, simply because I want to cut costs. But is there a way that you can actually cut costs for chicken feeding? In reality, yes. Actually, the most interesting bit is that despite the fact that per kilogram, the cost of protein is the highest, in terms of absolute volumes, the cost of energy is what contributes the highest cost in your feeding chickens. How much you're going to be spending on the maize, for example, is way higher than what you're going to be spending on, let's say, the soya cake that you're going to be using to feed your chickens, or the soya, or the sunflower cake. It's way, way higher. And the most interesting thing is that when it comes to protein, it's very difficult that you have very huge variations in terms of cost. For example, if, for example, here in Uganda, we are paying 3,000 for a kilogram of, of soya cake. It's very difficult, I don't find it twice that, you know, 6,000 or three times that. But for the cost of maize, it has increased. It can even be three times or even up to four times the cost that you'll be paying at the beginning. So if you want to save in terms of absolute cost for feeding your chickens, the most relevant thing is actually try and save in terms of the energy sources. That is buy the maize when the seasons are low. You know, when, when there's a lot of maize available in the market, usually what happens is that the cost of the maize comes down. It will come down to about 600 shillings for us here in Uganda, 600, 700 shillings. Right now, it's about 1,800, 1,900 shillings. You know, that's three times. It can even go to higher than that. So if you want to cut the cost, that's what I discovered. Save on the energy sources, buy and save in bulk when the cost is low. Now you're probably thinking, then what's the whole point of the Black Soldier Fly Lavi? Is it viable? Is it something I can use? 100% it's something that can be used and you know that's why I actually shared this story on my channel because I wouldn't share something that I find very useless to you my subscribers. So there are other kinds of animals that are not as sensitive to the crude protein that is being supplied to them and animals where the variability won't affect them as much. For example if you're keeping local chickens Black soldier flies are perfect because they are cheaper and local chickens don't give a damn, you know. If you're going to be feeding them on your very expensive soya cake or other sources of protein, they still won't utilize them as quickly to grow. So you want to feed them on the cheapest that you can find, but that still provides the nutrients that you need. So local chickens, also dual purpose chickens, they are perfect for that because, you know, they are very good at converting a lot of these things into what they actually do need. Piggery. Piggery is perfect if you want to use, you know, black soldier fly larvae because, again, they are not as sensitive as, for example, layer chickens or breeder chickens or broiler chickens. And also fish. You know, the interesting thing is that fish is used to feed fish. You know, people grow fish and this fish is used to feed other fish that humans are going to eat. And it just doesn't make sense. Fish are actually a perfect example why you can use black soldier fly larvae. Because black soldier fly larvae are way cheaper to raise compared to fish and feeding your fish fish. So these types of animals are actually a perfect example and a perfect way for you to actually use black soldier fly larvae to feed your animals. So if you're using and raising any of these kinds of animals, it would be a perfect idea. But if you're keeping layers, you're keeping broilers, you're keeping breeders, you know, I, I, I would take it with a pinch of salt because I don't think it's a very, very wise idea. There are other ways of saving, like I've already shared, and it's not very, very effective. You want to maximize efficiency. Like I always tell my farmers when they come and ask me, how do I make the best and the most out of my layers? The thing is that you want to maximize efficiency. You want to go to as high in terms of production as possible. That's how you're going to maximize profitability. For me on my farm, 
My buds have been laying in the upper 80s for a very long time. A lot of farmers, they try to cut costs, and when you cut the costs, for example, if you're giving your buds black soldier fly larvae, and because of the fluctuations, your production drops down to the 70s, trust me, that 15% drop in terms of production is nothing going to be compared to what you're trying to save in terms of chicken feed. You'd rather have that 15% and try to use it, you know, to offset the feed cost. You want to maximize what you're producing. When you maximize what you're producing, produce as high as possible, then you're going to have the very best results in terms of your chickens. And another reason is that despite the fact that, you know, finding a breeder who is going to just supply you with larvae, will have decreased the burden of raising the black soldier flies. You still have the work of raising the larvae, you know, to feed them to the chickens. Whether it's 10 days or 15 days or seven days, you actually do still have work of finding the waste um, and feeding it to the larvae, raising them, drying them and giving them to the chickens. And for me, if you have a huge farm, you have a huge project, you know, 5,000, 10,000 birds, you already do have a lot of work. This division of attention and trying to go and do this to raise these, you know, black soldier fly larvae is also something that's going to be taking away a lot of my attention and reducing my efficiency in terms of how much I can do towards my chickens. So. It also doesn't make sense for me that way. But if someone is having smaller numbers of birds, you know, you're having 500 birds, 300 birds, it makes sense. It's not too much attention being given to the chickens. But for me, on such a huge scale, I want to concentrate a lot of my attention on actually raising the chickens and do as little of, you know, raising the feed as possible. I just want to get the feed, you know, probably just mix it and then give it to the birds. I don't want to, for example, start raising maize from day one. I do have some maize around on my farm right now, but it's nothing significant to what's going to be used to feed the chickens, you know. For example, over here, I'm, I'm using a lot of kilograms of maize every day. What I'm growing on maybe an acre here is nothing compared to that. So it's very, very important that you also pay attention. So yes, those are the reasons I'm certainly 100% not going to be using black soldier fly larvae to feed my chickens. But if it's local chickens, I could be doing it. I'm planning on doing fish farming and I could do it. But for now, 100% no. If you want to use black soldier fly larvae to feed your animals, I've already given you the sides, you can think about it, and if it makes sense to you, come on, go ahead. But if you're feeding layers, broilers and breeders, I don't advise you to. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, smash the notification bell, that way you never miss out on an upload. Lots of love, bye.